So we have here um, an RFID reader with a USB jack. So uh, this reader uh, adheres to the well, reads cards that are of ISO 14443 standard. And uh, many cards use that standard. Um, the USB port plugs directly into uh, any uh, sort of laptop or PC, and in our case here, we have uh, we're using a typical uh, netbook. Here, what happens is that um, on this netbook, we have installed uh, Ubuntu Netbook Edition 10.10, 10. um, and um, and it's got the appropriate driver to read from the from the uh, USB card reader. So once um once a netbook uh, the Ubuntu is 10.10 uh, .10 netbook version is set up, um, the first thing you want to do uh, is to test the reader, and you can do so by plugging in the reader to a USB port on the netbook, like this. So once the la reader is plugged in, the first thing you want to do is check to see if, the, if you can read the reader. And to do so, go to the accessory tab and choose the terminal and you'll see something like this. So, um, you can type DMESG and looking below here we see that the Silicon Labs CP210X chip the, the driver for that, the RS-232 serial adapter driver has been loaded and that and that it is connect it is connected to TTY USB 0 device so let's try that, let's test that we can do simply cat slash dev slash tty usb0 and let's look at the this is the reader uh, every time I tap a card to you see that um, something is there but it's probably the wrong baud rate, so let's do something here. Let's cancel that. Control C, get out. STTY dash capital F. Just do this. Dash slash dev slash S, uh, TTY USB zero. And set the baud rate to 9600 which is what the, this reader puts out data at, the speed. And let's do the cat again, and let's take a look at it again. Here we go. So this is the correct data. Um, according to the spec on the reader, this reader puts out um, 17 bytes of data per read. And it ends with a carriage return and new line, which is what you see here. Uh, it starts out, I believe, with a seven hex seven e, and then followed by um, uh, another byte of I think it's reader number. And the most important thing would be the following five bytes, which identifies the which is the card ID. So the next piece of the puzzle here is a software that reads the card data, checks against a whitelist, 
uh, checks that card ID against the whitelist and then activates something, the lock in this case. Uh, the software currently is written in Perl and it looks something like this. Uh, in this case, it's called octolock.pl. This is really a very a draft version of this uh, software, and to go through it quickly, um, what it does here is it opens, um, it tries to open the Octopus card reader port, and then uh, it also opens the um, what we're using something called an Arduino to. Um, to activate a relay to turn on the lock here for now. Uh, so this is what it's doing here. And these are the baud rates, baud rate setting uh, in case um, the driver doesn't init initialize with the correct, correct baud rate. There are these um, current sort of test card ID numbers here. And then, um, and then there's sort of the main loop of the, so um, of the software here. And what it, to summarize it, what it does here is that um, it waits for data on the on the from coming from coming in from the card reader, and once it gets the uh, some data, it starts accumulating the bytes. And when it sees 17 bytes, then it checks the it extracts the five byte card ID and um, checks it against the whitelist. And if if it's good, then the lock is activated. So I mentioned earlier that um, we are initially using uh, something called an Arduino. Um, it's an open source hardware um, developed in Italy uh, by a group of people uh, that allows people like us to easily connect uh, hardware and control hardware through um, uh, say the laptop in this case um, and this piece of hardware um, this is a typical Arduino board on the bottom and then with something called an Arduino shield on top uh, this is a developer shield which allows me us to sort of um, quickly prototype something and in this case what we have prototyped here is uh, a relay that will be activated uh, by the netbook the relay is a magnetically operated switch. So basically what this does is uh, a command is sent from the netbook and this switch will close. And in our case, closing the switch should activate the lock mechanism. So there's software loaded uh, on this um, Arduino itself. Uh, what this piece of software does on board is that uh, it waits for uh, data from the netbook through the USB serial port. Uh, when, a <coughs> excuse me. when it receives a byte, it will close this relay switch for a few seconds. And during those few seconds, the magnetic lock on the door will stay open which allows the operator to uh, open the door. So after plugging this Arduino board, the USB cable into the netbook, uh, the first thing we do is run that piece of uh, software called Octolock written in Perl to um, start waiting for data from the reader, USB reader and uh, to demonstrate that the switch closes here is a multimeter uh, connected to the relay here as you can see these two alligator clips connect to the multimeter and the multimeter is reading the the uh, resistance across the switch. Right now, OL means open. I, I guess it means open loop or open circuit. And uh, when if the switch activates correctly, 
then this should show something close to zero. So as I put a card against the reader and the re reader registers a beep, as you see, the resistance drops to zero for uh, momentarily for a few seconds. That is uh, programmed. The number of seconds that this switch is closed is programmed into the Arduino here. So here we have the, the lock connected to the Arduino with the relay and a power supply, a 12 volt power, DC power supply. And to demonstrate um, <coughs> the integration of all the pieces, uh, first we run that uh, Octolock software on the, on the um, netbook. And currently the door jam is, is locked. But when we put a card against the card reader, which is on the white list, the, the card, a card which is on the white list against the card reader, you hear this click and notice that the, oops, let me do this again quickly. You hear the click and that allows the door jam to momentarily open, which in real term, when this is installed into a door frame, then during that click, that short time, the person who put the card against the reader will be able to pull on the door and open it. So this is the end result. Um, here's the reader. And when I tap my card, which is on my watch, to the reader, you hear the click. And here we go. The lock is mounted in the door frame. Here's a USB cable. It goes all the way around. Down to this cabinet. Voila. The netbook is mounted on the door. I don't cease to be impressed by the engineer. <laughs> Seriously. Thanks. Amazing.